Hey everybody, it's Bandor Tyrell again, and I'm going to do a really quick video for you today on how to create an ORM texture map, which is part of the PBR materials. ORM stands for occlusion, which is ambient occlusion, and the R is for roughness, and the M is for metallic. And so this is a single RGB image that actually contains three separate grayscale images for three different um, texture maps or material maps. One is for your ambient occlusion, one is for the roughness map, and one is for the metallic map. And so this is a trick that's played by taking these three different grayscale images, putting one on each of the three different color channels, R for red, G for green, B for blue, and then combining them into one image so that you can only you only have to upload one image to Second Life instead of having to upload three and managing them separately. Um, and so there's a lot of confusion about this and people are like, well, how do I make that? And um, I have it in another video, but it's kind of deep down embedded inside the video. So I wanted to do a real quick video in less than 10 minutes to show you how to do this. So to start off with, I have this AO. This is my grayscale image. It's an ambient occlusion file for the back of this chair. And so you can see it has shadows for where the slats fit on the back and on the sides are darker, so they have some more shading there. Uh, and then it shows all the little shadows and highlights that you see on the back of this chair. So I'm going to use this to create, if I was just doing Blin Fong, I would use this AO and I would take it in Photoshop and I would do layer masking and multiply and I would combine this with uh, like a leather texture to create the, the diffuse texture that you would use in Blin Fong. Well, with PBR materials, it's a little more complicated. You have to actually embed your AO. You don't bake it onto your um, base color. You could if you want to, but that's kind of defeating the purpose. Uh, it's better to put the AO where it belongs, which is in the ORM material, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing we want to do is we want to open up Photoshop, and then we're going to open the AO file. You could, do, you could start with a blank image if you want and build up from there, but I'm going to start with the... Um, the actual AO so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. So instead of doing the back of that chair, let's do the frame of the chair. So this is chair frame AO. And that's for all of the wood parts with the slats and the arms and the legs um, for that chair. And that's what it looks like. So I have this and it's all the pieces of the wood are broken up and they're all horizontal. That way, when I apply a wood grain texture, as long as the wood grain is going horizontal, it will look correct on the wood and won't look like it's going crossways on it. All right, so we'll, we'll have this loaded here in Photoshop. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is this is a grayscale image. And so when you open it in Photoshop, it opens as a grayscale. And that's not going to work for us because our image that we're going to create needs to be an RGB color image. So first thing you have to do is convert it. So to do that, you go to the Image menu, Mode, and see it has grayscale is checked here. We're going to go down to RGB color and check that instead. And so now it is, uh, it's an RGB image. It still looks grayscale, but, but it's actually RGB. Uh, and the background layer where our AO is, is actually locked. So we need to unlock that. So by clicking the little lock, we unlock it. Now I'm using Photoshop. You could use GIMP or any other program you want. And this is how you do it. So I don't know the specific commands in those other programs to do it, but this is the concept. So you want to work on channels. So what we're looking at right now is the composite um, RGB image which is composite mean it's combining the data from three different color channels, red, green, and blue into this um, final image. Now, if I go to the channels tab, I have it docked here next to my layers tab, but you, you may have it somewhere else. And if you don't see it at all, just go up to window and then you'll find channels right here. And you can click that or you can click this. It's, it gives you the same menu. Now you can see there's four what look like layers, but they're actual what we call channels. The first one is the composite, which is the uh, combination of the three underneath it, which are the red, the green, and the blue channel. So to get this visual, this black and white resulting RGB image, you have to have the same thing on all three RGB layers to get that. Well, we're not playing with color when we're doing the ORM map. What we're, what we're doing is we're actually going to treat the red, green, and blue channels as three different things. The red channel is the ambient occlusion map. 
The green channel is going to be a map for the roughness, which represents how reflective the surface is. <clears throat> and the blue channel is metallic, so it's indicating how metallic something is. Now, you can use a solid color, uh, a solid, so, sorry, a solid grayscale image for these, or you can actually use something like this AO map, which splits it up by the, the UV map of the object. And so you can have parts of your object that are highly reflective, parts of your object that are matte, parts that are in between. You can also vary the amount of how metallic surfaces are by using an actual map and applying different data, different, different gray values um, for the different parts. But for what we're doing for this purpose, I don't really care about that for my roughness and my metallic because I'm doing this for the whole wood. If we go back and look at it, we're going to be applying this to the whole, um, not this one, we're going to apply it to the wood frame. So I want the all of the wood to have the same reflectiveness and all of the wood to have the same metallic values. So um, in order to do that, we're going to use a solid color. Okay, so here we go back to Photoshop. And now if you look at these channels, I wish we could rename them, but we can't. So just remember red is occlusion, green is roughness, and blue is metallic. So what I want to have is I want my wood to be somewhat reflective and somewhat shiny, somewhat metallic. Uh, I don't want it to be matte, but I don't want it to be like a mirror reflection because you get so much, it looks, it just looks bad. So I want to put a little bit of shininess, a little bit of reflectiveness, a little bit of metallic on it to make it look somewhat shiny and reflective. In order to do that, we have to think about what this data means. So this is the, oh, this is the ambient occlusion. We're going to keep it as it is, so we're going to leave it alone. So I'm just going to um, hide that for now. Notice now that since the red is missing out of this, the color changed from white. White in the composite output means that you have 100% on, on a pixel by pixel basis. A pixel has 100% red, 100% green, and 100% blue. That creates white. So white is, white is not the absence of color. White is the combination of colors. Whereas black is the absence of color. Um, pigments works differently than light. We're talking about light here. Okay, so for green, which is the roughness, I want a little bit of reflection. So to get a little bit of reflection, you want to not have maximum roughness. And this is, you have to think counterintuitively because roughness works backwards from what you would think. So if you think about it logically, what does being rough mean? Rough means you're not going to get a lot of reflection because think of a mirror. A mirror is highly polished. So if you have a a piece of metal and you polish that metal, it becomes more and more reflective, right? As you're getting rid of the roughness, it's becoming more reflective. So when there's no roughness, then you're maximum reflection. So zero roughness would equal maximum reflection. <coughs> and so for the values for zero is black, the value for maximum is white. And in between are shades of gray. And so since I, I don't want it to be zero reflection, I want it to be a little reflection, let's try something around a 10%, which would be a 10% grayscale. So to do that, we're going to take our foreground color here and click on it, and we're going to pick a gray. That's This would be white, which would be maximum roughness or no reflection. Black would be no roughness or maximum reflection. So I want it to be somewhere up here around that value. It looks looks white, but it's not. And we're going to go to the green channel, and we will do edit fill with the foreground color. Okay, so that changed the value here. Now, We'll go ahead and turn that off and we'll go look at the, the blue value. Now the blue value again is the metallic. The metallic is not how reflective it is. It's, it's kind of how shiny it is and how metallic it is. 
because you can have dull metal and you can have polished metal, right? So they split roughness from metallic. So I want it to have a little bit of a metallic sheen, but not much. So again, it's about that 10% value. So, but now let's talk about what that means. So I was using a very light gray, which is almost white. In this case, I want it to be almost nothing. I want it to only have a very little and almost nothing. Nothing would be black. So almost nothing would be a really dark gray. So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna move our color down to almost black like there and then we're going to fill that into the blue which is the metallic value edit fill with foreground color and it gives us a dark value in there okay now when we turn all three back on and we look at the composite this is what the result is so if we go back over to layers that's what you see here so this with the yellow and the green and uh, the the gray, the gradations of uh, value. So you have from dark to light, you have the, the shading. That's, that's what we want. And so what Second Life will do is it'll take this image, it'll split those three channels out into their grayscale values and use that to set the ambient occlusion, the roughness and the metallic on a pixel by pixel basis. And this is a 1024 by 1024 image that I'm using. You could use whatever resolution you want. Okay, and now we're going to export that. And I'm going to drop it into my export folder. And I'm going to go back down. It was called frame.ao is what I use, right? But I'm going to call this frame underscore slightly shiny. Yeah. Not AO. It's not an AO, it's an ORM. So we're going to call this ORM. This is just for my benefit so I can find it. Okay, now we're going to pop back over to Second Life. Okay, here we are in Second Life, and I'm going to upload that image. The build, upload, image, export, and scroll down to find it. It's called frame slightly shiny.orm. There it is. We're going to upload it. And that's going to show up in our textures folder right here. Now I'm going to edit the chair. Turn on edit link parts so I can select just the frame or select face, either one. Then go to texture. And we're going to look at the PBR values. And then you'll notice there is an ORM in here that looks like that. It's got green and orange in it. And that's going to give us the look that it has right now. But I'm going to put this new one on there. And just drag it right onto ORM. Wait for it to load. Okay, it's loaded. And now... You can see that's what it looks like. And I don't know that you can tell a huge difference between what was there and what's there now. But that's how you would do it. So anyway, that's how you make an ORM. If you have any questions, they're using Photoshop. There's other ways to do it too. You can use Materialize or some other program like that, but this is using Photoshop. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, or leave a comment in the comment section. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. So we'll talk to you guys next time.